Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mad Frank, and welcome to Mad Frank Presents. <laughs> Tonight's movie is for astronauts, carpenters, fat people who have a belly that shakes like a bowl full of jelly, and also for former denture wearers. <laughs> Let me hang up my cape and we'll talk about it. <laughs> Hi there, Harvey. Hi, Mad Frank. Did you say tonight's movie is for astronauts? Yes, I did. I can't wait to see it. I didn't know you were an astronaut, Harvey. I'm not, but I'm interested in a little more space. <laughs> a little more space. We'd all like a little more space. <laughs> you can watch from there. George, 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 tell me, in your younger years, did you have a belly that shook like a bowl full of jelly? No. <laughs> no. I like a guy with a straight, simple, forward answer. <laughs> Miss Frizzy, Miss Frizzy, come on out of that bag. Hi there. <laughs> Tell me, were you ever a former denture wearer? <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. All of your life, your lips have been sutured shut. <laughs> About tonight's film. Put on your hat and coat. You're going to be traveling from planet to planet. Our film is entitled Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. This film takes us to the outer thresholds of outer space. But I think you'll like the film, especially if you have a low threshold for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> if you're looking for a movie that depicts violence, murder, and excessive smoking scenes, then I think you'll have to turn the channel. <laughs> <laughs> but I guarantee you, if after two hours you're still here, you'll be telling yourself, didn't I have anything better to do? <laughs> <laughs> so, the challenge is on. Get ready to move into a state of comatose, which means sit back, relax, kick off your shoes, and for the next couple of hours, take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus conquers the Martians. <laughs> Roll it!
At this time, Station KID-TV brings you the special event of the year, a first in television history. At this very moment, KID-TV has standing by a television crew at Santa Claus Workshop. And in just a few seconds, our special correspondent, Andy Henderson, will bring you a person-to-person -person interview with Santa Claus himself direct from the North Pole, where at the moment, the temperature is 91 degrees below zero. And now KID-TV takes you via Telstar, Andy Henderson at the North Pole. Hi, kids. This is Andy Henderson at the North Pole. Woo, it's cold up here. <laughs> From this spot, there's only one direction you can go, and that's south. <laughs> Living up here is pretty rough. I don't see how Santa stands it. <laughs> Since we've been here, we've eaten nothing but frozen food. At least that's the way it is by the time we get it. <laughs> and now, let's take a look-see into Santa's workshop. Hello again. Boys and girls, it's just weeks before Christmas, and Santa and his helpers are working overtime to make sure that there's enough toys for the kids all over the world. Santa's a pretty busy man, but I'm sure he'd like to say a few words to you kids. Hello, Santa. Oh, hello, son. Oh, oh, hello, boys and girls. <laughs> oh, it's Andy. You caught me at a very busy time. Well, uh, <laughs> do you think you'll be ready by Christmas Eve? Well, we've never disappointed the kids yet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, is it true that this year there's a rumor that you're going to use a rocket sled? No, sir. We're going out the good old-fashioned way with my reindeer. Prancer and Dancer and Dunder and Blitz and, and Vixen and Nixon. Uh, Nixon, oh, did I get, uh, oh, I always con son it, I get those names mixed up, but the kids know their names. <laughs> Santa, there you are. We have so much to do, and you stand here dawdling, talking to this visitor. Mr. Anderson, this is Mrs. Claus. Uh, we're dear, we're on television. How do you do, Mr. Anderson? Ma'am? Now, I want you to go and finish painting those hobby horses. Television? Did you say we're on television? Oh, oh, dear. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Oh, my hair's a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Mr. Anderson, and I'll show you some of the new toys we're turning on. How's it going, Winky? Everything is a-okay, Santa. Good man. <laughs> Winky is in charge of our space department. Ah. Oh, uh, now here, here is the latest toy rocket. It runs on real rocket fuel. Really? Mm. I've been wondering, what is this strange little creature over here? Oh, uh, Winky made that. That's his idea of a Martian. A Martian? <laughs> Wowie, wow, I'd hate to meet a creature like that on a dark night. <laughs> I wonder if there really are people on Mars. Well, who knows? Well, if there are, I hope they have someone like you up there, Santa, to bring joy and good cheer to all the Martian children. Oh, Mr. Anders. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, keep going, Winky. Christmas Eve is coming soon. Now, Mr. Anderson, I want to show you some more things. Drop off. Drapo, you lazy good-for-nothing, where are you? Drapo. Drapo, wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Stand up. I love that <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I'm sorry, Chief Kimar, sir. Droppo, you are the laziest man on Mars. Why are you sleeping during working hours? I wasn't sleeping, Chief. It's just that I haven't been able to sleep these last few nights. I forgot how. So I was just practicing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suggest you practice doing your work. 
Where's Lady Momar? Oh, she went to the food pill center to get some new food pills. The children haven't been eating well. No appetite at all. Oh, it's no wonder. They sit in front of the video set all day watching those ridiculous Earth programs. It confuses them. Where are they? Oh, and they're watching Earth programs. Say, Santa, what have we here? These are new dolls. Now, this little doll walks, talks, cries, and she even sings. Almost like a real, live little girl. That she is, sir, that she is. All she needs is tender, loving care. Grandma, what is a doll? I don't know, Grandma. What is tender, loving care? I don't know either. Boma, Grandma, I told you not to watch those silly Earth programs. Now go to sleep. Must we go to sleep now, Father? I want to see Santa Claus some more. I want to see more toys. No, go to sleep. Hello, Droppo. I see you're keeping busy. Oh, I've been working very hard, Lady Mobar. I've been vacuuming the room. Good. Is the master here? Oh, he's in there. And Kimar is very angry, too. Kimar, I bought some new food pills. I hope the children will eat these. We have hamburger, buttered asparagus, mashed potatoes, and a special treat for them. Chocolate layer cake pills. Momar, I'm worried about our children. So am I. They've hardly eaten a thing in three days. It goes deeper than that. They're behaving strangely. They appear to be troubled. They don't care to sleep. I had to use the sleep spray on them again. I mentioned this to my council chiefs today, and I learned it's the same with children all around the planet in every district. Something is happening to the children of Mars. Kima, as leader of the Martians, you must do something about it. I know. But what? Why don't you go to the forest and see Chochem, the Ancient One? He'll know what to do. He's never failed you. You speak wisely. I will go. Attention, Council Chiefs. Please report. Lomas reporting. Rigna reporting. Hargo here. Boldar? Boldar, please report. Boldar reporting. Gentlemen of the Council, we will meet immediately at Chochum's chair in Thunder Forest. What's wrong now, Kima? I don't know, Voldar, but I mean to find out. We'll find out when Kimar arrives. We are probably going to seek the advice of Trojan. What does Kimar think we are? A kindergarten class? Can't we make our own decisions? Must we always come crawling to that doddering old man? Chochem is 800 years old. You can't dismiss the wisdom of centuries. I can. Gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Chochem? Chochem, are you here? Ancient one of Mars, I call upon you. Chochem, it is I, Kima, and the council chiefs. We need you, Chochem. We 
We need your advice, Chochin. Something is wrong with our children. They eat not, they sleep not. Their only interest is watching meaningless Earth programs on the video. What time of year is it now? It is the middle of September. No, no, not here. I mean on Earth. Ah, yes. It is early December on Earth. Close to the time of the Christmas. That explains it. What is a Christmas? It is an occasion for great joy and peace on the planet Earth. And for children, it is also a time of anticipation as they await the arrival of Santa Claus and his gifts. Bah! What nonsense! What has this to do with our children, Ancient One? We have no children on Mars. They have children's bodies, but with adult minds. They do not have a childhood. I've seen this coming for centuries. They are born. Our electronic teaching machines are attached to their brains while they are in their cradles. Information is fed into their minds in a constant stream. And by the time they can walk, they are adults. They've never played. They've never learned to have fun. And now, now they are rebelling. What do you advise? The children must be allowed to be children again. They must learn to play. They must learn what it means to have fun. We need a Santa Claus on Mars. Santa Claus on Mars? Where will we get a Santa Claus? There's only one Santa Claus, and he's on Earth. <laughs> well, I guess that takes care of that. Didn't I tell you it was a foolish idea to seek advice from that old man? This is a serious matter, Voldar. And desperate problems require desperate deeds. Earth has had Santa Claus long enough. We will bring him to Mars. I'm against it. Our children are fine the way they are. I don't want any Santa Claus bringing them toys and games. They'll start playing and laughing and running underfoot. They'll become a nuisance. I've made my decision. We leave for Earth tonight. Rigna, Lomas, prepare spaceship number one. Access channel can be seen 24-7 all over the world. Moorhead Access is live streaming everywhere so you can see us on anything with web access. Use your phone, tablet, computer, smart TV, or web accessible DVD player to see us on whatever size screen you want. Just go to moorheadaccess.org and click on the big live stream button. Then click on the viewer, that's it. Go to moreheadaxis.org and click to live stream the Moorhead Access channel. Hello, I'm Tony Tilton. I'm general manager of MCAM, Moorhead Community Access Media. MCAM is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we bring you the Moorhead Access channels throughout the city of Moorhead and in the whole metro on Cable One. 
MCAM is in major need of replacing some aging gear, so we're asking for your help. MCAM does what it can with a small budget, but now we need some help, and so we're having a capital campaign. MCAM is hoping to raise around $10,000 for equipment needed and several thousand more for streaming and for programming purchases. We appreciate your help, so please go to our website, moreheadaccess.org, and click on the donate button to directly donate via PayPal. MCAM looks forward to providing you with local and regional coverage of what you enjoy. Thank you for your donation to Moorhead Community Access Media. So the Martians need a Santa Claus, and they're off to planet Earth on spaceship number one. I would guess from the low-budget film, they probably don't have a spaceship number two. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, Ichibod, you look a little excited. Yes, I am. I, I think I just saw a UFO. Ooh, this is interesting. Tell me about it. Well, I was on my way over here from my Grave Diggers Anonymous meeting. Grave Diggers Anonymous? Who died? I, I can't talk about it. That's probably why they call it... Uh, Grave Diggers Anonymous. <laughs> anyway, I was on my way over here, and there was this UFO. It was low to the ground, and it whizzed right past me. How fast do you think it was going? I don't know for sure. I was running at the time. Hmm. Well, if you subtracted out your running speed, how fast do you think it was going? I don't know, Mad Frank. It, it sort of whizzed by me like that. And, and it was red? It, yes, it was red, and it had flashing red lights, and, and uh, it whizzed by me, and, and there, there were people inside, and they had yellow skin, and I think their head stuck back here about this far. Uh, was there a wailing noise? Uh, come to think about it, yes, there was. I think I know what you saw. What was it? A fire truck. A fire truck? No, it couldn't have been due. Uh, it, because it was going this fast, Matt Frank. Well, I don't know. Hi, fire Matt trucks Frank. Oh, 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 hi, hi Matt Program. Say it, Ichibod thinks he had a UFO encounter. Yes, I did. Well, that's interesting. I just had a UFO encounter in the film room. You Ooh. did? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> that's right. A genuine UFO. That's an ultra film overload. That's when you have too much film for this tiny reel. Oh. Well, the film rolled out all over the floor. The projector jammed. The film caught fire. And I had to call the fire truck. Fire, fire truck? truck. Boom. <laughs> yes, everyone should have a UFO encounter. It'll make a better person out of you. Yeah. Hey, hi, hi, hi. Oh, hi, Billy Jennifer. You know, that gas would just pulled up outside. What? what? A fire truck. A, a fire, fire truck? truck. Mm. <laughs> uh, Ikiba, I just had an encounter, a yes, UFO we encounter. About that. I just had an encounter of the third kind. You had a UFO encounter of the third kind? You <laughs> actually had a UFO encounter of the third kind? Yes. 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 What's a UFO encounter of the third kind? Well, that's well, when that's a, a red lurk comes flying by and then it whizzes like this. Uh, and then it looks like we're having an encounter of the fourth kind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I get it. projected Earth orbit. Fire! Portside rockets, number one and number two. Portside rockets, number one and number two. Fire! Entering Earth orbit. All right, Voldar, now to find Santa Claus. Turn on your magnoscope to third power. We're over a city of some kind. So that's what the Earth people call a city, eh? How primitive. Look at all those buildings above ground. Why, we could destroy that city with one blast of our curé. We've not come here to destroy anyone. Our only purpose is to bring Santa Claus back to Mars. Turn to fifth power. Let's see if we can locate Santa Claus. He wears a red suit, trimmed with white fur, and he has a long white beard. But there are millions of people down there. It's like looking for a speck of space dust in a comet's tail. Wait a minute. I see him. I see Santa Claus. I see him too. He's standing on the corner ringing a bell. No, he's not. 
He's standing near the entrance of a large building next to a large black kettle. He's standing on the corner, Kima. He's... Wait a minute. I see another one. Well, there are hundreds of Santa Clauses down there. Are we going to bring them all back with us to Mars? Just one. And with so many, they won't miss one. Prepare for landing on next orbit. We interrupt our program with a special bulletin. An unidentified object has been spotted in orbit around the Earth. The Soviet Union denies it has launched any new space satellites. Our radar stations are tracking the spaceship, or whatever it is. The U.S. Air Force has alerted all defense commands and retaliatory units. Stay tuned for further bulletins. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this movie to bring you the following announcement. We want to remind you that this is just a movie. Don't panic. The spacecraft does not really have a cure ray. Your city will not be blown up. Once again, this is just a movie. No need to panic. You can return to your nap without recourse. And now, back to our film in progress. Sir, Earth radar beams are bouncing off our ship. Well. It certainly took them long enough. Hold on. Turn on the radar shield. Misfunctioning of radar shield. Rigna, check the radar box. Radar shield functioning. What was wrong, Rigna? A slight case of droppo. Oh, hi, Chief. What are you doing here, Droppo? Oh, 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 well, Chief, I went to the launching pad so I could say goodbye to you, and I remembered. I've never been to Earth. So I thought I wanted to... But stay. I may leave you there in place of Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Now get below. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> Trouble. Get below quickly. Yes, yes, Chief. I'm sorry. I'm... Prepare to land. We'll set down in that field near the lake. Rocket silencer is set. Rotor rockets number one and two. Fire. All this trouble over a fat little man in a red suit. Here is another UFO bulletin. The Defense Department has just announced that the unidentified flying object has suddenly disappeared from our radar screens. They believe the object has either disintegrated in space or it may be a spaceship from some other planet which has the ability to nullify our radar beams. Because of the ominous situation, the President has ordered the Strategic Air Command into action. Hi, Matt Frank here. Once again, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you the following announcement. There has been no Martian landing and no cause to panic. Uh, I've just spoke to Santa Claus at the North Pole. He's uh, doing okay at his toy shop. As you can see, the cards and letters continue to come in at an alarming rate. And uh, the, the phone has been ringing off the hook since airtime. Uh, oh, excuse me, there's the phone now. Uh, hello, Matt Frank here. Uh, no, this isn't the pet cemetery. Hey, you have the wrong number. Right. Well, like I said, the phone has been ringing off. Oh, excuse me, just a minute. Uh, hello, Mad Frank here. Uh, no, this is not Grave Diggers Anonymous. Uh, well, we have a crisis here at the moment. Uh, yes, I can get you the number, but I'll have to dig it up later. <laughs> well, as we said, we repeat, the Martians have not landed, and there is nothing to worry. Oh, excuse me. This important announcement just in. Would the person who owns the green Chevy in the back parking lot please move it? You're blocking the fire truck. You're blocking the fire truck. Hey, we have a crisis here on hand, and I have announcements about green Chevys blocking fire. Whose green Chevy is that? Is it what? Has M. Frank on the license plate? Oh, right, right back. <laughs> Lower landing legs. Landing legs lowered. Attention crew, this is Kimar. When we've landed, Rigna, Voldar and I will leave the ship to investigate. Hargo, Lomas and Droppo will stay on board on constant alert for immediate blast off. Department.
believes that the object spotted on our radar screens might have been nothing more than a meteor which burned up when it entered our atmosphere. Professor Werner von Green, our leading space expert, is still convinced it was a Martian spaceship. Stay tuned for further bulletins. Billy, what did the Martian look like? I don't know. Nobody's ever seen one. I don't believe there are any Martians. You don't, huh? What would you do if a Martian look right up behind you? I scream. Betty, I'm trying to sleep. I see a Martian. Boy, you and your imagination. Come on, let's go home. Who, who are you? We're from Mars. Don't be afraid. We have children just like you on Mars. What are those funny things sticking out of your head? Those are our antenna. Are you a television set? Shh. <laughs> Stupid question. Is this what you want to do to our children on Mars? Turn them into nincompoops like these? Hold your tongue, Voldar. What's your name, little boy? Billy. Billy Foster, sir. And this is my sister, Betty. Well, perhaps you can help us, Billy. We're looking for one of your Santa Clauses. There's only one Santa Claus. We've seen many of them in your cities. Oh, those are his helpers. There's only one real Santa Claus, and he's in his workshop up at the North Pole. That's what we came here to find out. Let's go. Come on, you two. Let me go. Where are you taking us? Leave them alone, Volda. What? And leave them here to inform the authorities? He's right, Kimar. We better take them along with us to the North Pole. Very well. Come along. This morning, two children disappeared mysteriously from the vicinity of Welch Lake. The police have found no clues, and it seems as though Billy and Betty Foster have simply vanished into thin air. This appears to be a day when everything is vanishing into thin air. Local police are continuing their search for the missing children. The armed forces are continuing their search for the mysterious object from space. Billy and Betty. Nobody's here. Come on in. Wally! Uh, now, I'm not supposed to bring you here. The chief's going to be awful mad if he finds us. Boy, when you were kids at home, Bonnie, I was in a real Martian spaceship. Now, no, don't touch anything. Now, here. That's the anti-gravity generator. And these are the retro rockets. Does this light up? Only when radar waves are bouncing off our ship. Then we put up this radar screen, then nobody can find us in space. Boy, that's <laughs> pretty sharp. Yeah. What's this, Joppo? Oh, that's the elevator signal. That light starts flashing when somebody's coming up from the navigation deck. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Somebody's coming up. You better get out of here. Oh, oh. Thinking of taking another nap in the radar box, Droppo? No, sir. As a matter of fact, I was just looking in there to remind myself never to hide in there again. <laughs> I bet. Approaching North Pole. I can see Santa Claus' workshop. I prepare for landing. Pago, set the rocket silences. Drabo, you stay aboard and guard those children. They must not leave the ship now. Now or ever. What do you mean, Volda? If we take them with us to Mars, Santa's disappearance will remain a mystery. No one on Earth will ever know that Santa Claus was kidnapped by Martians. Perhaps you're right. Droppo, 
Yes, sir. Get back to those children and don't let them out of your sight. Understand? Yes, sir. I understand. I'll keep an eye. We've landed. Secure the ship. Lomas, you remain on guard and have the ship ready for immediate blast off. Rigna, Hargo, Voldar, you'll accompany me. Come, we'll activate Torg. Torg? To capture a roly-poly little man like Santa Claus? We don't need Torg. We won't take any chances. Come, nothing can stop Torg. and tell Voldar. Voldar, this is another one of your delaying tactics. You've been opposing me at every turn. Now I'm warning you, change your attitude. You finished, Chief? Yes, I am, and you will be too if you're not careful. Oh, but I am careful, Chief. So careful that I looked in at the children before I left the ship. You stay away from those children. That'll be easy to do. They've escaped. Voldar, if this is your idea of a joke... Ask Droppo. They overheard our plans. At this very moment, they're on their way to Santa Claus to warn him. It's true, Kima. They're footprints. We must stop them. Those children mustn't reach Santa Claus. Follow them. I'll put Torg on the trail. Torg, come out of the spaceship. Torg. Come out of the spaceship. Billy, I can't run anymore. I'm cold and I'm tired. And it's beginning to snow. Please, Betty, try. We've got to warn Santa. We can't stop now. They might catch us. Where is Santa? I don't know. His workshop must be somewhere around here. Betty, look! It's Voldor! He's the mean one. The one who doesn't like us. Come on!
Oh boy, that was a narrow escape. Why did he run away? I don't know. Take a look. It's all right now, Betty. Come on. I'm cold. I wish it wouldn't snow. That's the best thing that could happen. It'll cover our tracks and be harder for the Martians to find us. And it'll be harder for us to find Santa's workshop. I'm scared. We'll find it. Which way is north? I see it. I see it. Santa's workshop. Where? Right there. See the lights? Where? The lights are moving. Destroy them. Crush them. Crush them, Tog. Do as I say. Oh, uh, I knew you'd try something like this. I set Torg's control so he will obey only me. Release him, Torg. You were very lucky. Now don't try to escape again. You may not be so lucky next time. Hargo, take them back to the ship, lock them up, and rejoin us. You get away with this, you, you Martian! Danger grows with every minute. Let's get Santa Claus and blast off. We'll surround the workshop and send Torg in to get Santa. Nobody is to be harmed unless they get in our way. Ah, no one is to be harmed. What has happened to the great warriors of our planet? Mars used to be the planet of war. Mark my words, Kima. Your softness will destroy us. Santa Claus, toys, games, laughing children. Well, we shall see. But for now, to your posts. Torg, follow me. Access channel can be seen 24 7 all over the world. Moorhead Access is live streaming everywhere so you can see us on anything with web access. Use your phone, tablet, computer, smart TV, or web accessible DVD player to see us on whatever size screen you want. Just go to moorheadaccess.org and click on the big live stream button. Then click on the viewer, that's it. Go to moreheadaxis.org and click to live stream the Moorhead Axis channel. Vampires, werewolves, and spooky, scary skeletons. Let your bones rattle with spooky cinema on Moorhead Axis. Classics featuring Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff, Christopher Lee, and more. Get the schedule at moreheadaxis.org or check your local listings. 
Spooky Cinema on the Red Axis. <laughs> So the kids are threatened by Torg, the latest technological breakthrough in robotics. Hmm. What do you think about Torg, Icky? Well, it kind of reminded me of a giant vacuum cleaner, Matt Frank. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say that, but that's what you get when you have a low-budget low film. film. <laughs> is it true? Is it true? Is, is well, what true? that the Martians have landed? <laughs> I, I was in the restroom, and I turned around, and I saw him. He had a big green helmet, and he had aviator eyes. You know, he was wearing goggles and, and other stuff like that that Martians wear. Oh, that, yeah. that, that wasn't the Martian, Billy Jabber. That was your reflection in the mirror. Oh, oh for a minute there, I was really scared. Yeah, well, that's Man what freak! Man freak! What, what? What? There's something funny going on in the film room. Oh, like what? Well, I was watching the movie through my viewfinder, and all of a sudden, I saw this Martian wearing a green helmet. No, you saw uh, Billy uh, Jabber's yeah. reflection. No, was he was wearing uh, aviator eyes and goggles and, and all that other stuff that Martians wear. Now, ah. that, that programmer, you saw my reflection in that's the mirror. That's right. That's right. You saw oh. my yeah. I, I just feel so much better. You know, I thought I was seeing things. Yeah, no, no. Hey, no. hey, speaking of my reflection, there it is now. And he's carrying a big ray gun. Yeah! yeah. You're worried about it, just your reflection. Oh, That's yeah. What reflection? Yeah. That's a real Martian. Gordo Gleek Mopar Hadoken. Gordo Gleek Mopar Hadoken. What does that mean? I don't understand. I don't know, uh, Matt I Frank. I don't oh. speak a foreign language. Well, I, 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 it did the map track chew. Well, I, I don't know. Hey, I, I got it. I got what, it. What, I know what, what, what he said. That, what, it did the map track chew. Well, <laughs> well, well, we know, oh, we know he said yes, that, but what does yes, it mean? That's yes, what we want. Uh, You're going to have to be a little, explain a little better, clearer. We don't understand. Uh, yeah. we what don't do understand. you think? It's for imbeciles? Yeah. Hey, 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 don't give us a hand. Oh. <laughs> Is this the Mad Frank show? Oh. Wow, we're talking with a Martian. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know we could talk Martianese. Oh. <laughs> Matt Frank, ask him about the canals. Uh, about the canals? We were... I'm Omar. Are you Mad Frank? Yes, I'm Matt Frank. Yes, yeah, Frank. yeah, that's yeah, Matt, Frank. Matt Frank. I'm Matt Frank. I'm Frank. Children on Mars see your program. They want to meet you. Uh, oh, that's interesting, but, but, but how? I have a one-way ticket for you. One-way ticket? It's not even first class, it's coach. I mean, how about fly to Mars? What do you think, fellas? Well, don't, don't forget, forget to, to have them punch, punch your frequent, frequent flyer. <laughs> it is time to go. Oh, I, I, I can't go, Mr. Martian. I can't go. Why not? Well, I just didn't uh, want to. Matt Frank, Matt Frank, excuse uh, me, but it's time for a commercial break. Huh. It's time for a commercial break. That's why I can't go. I have to wait for the commercial break. I can't go. We have to wait for commercial break. I'll wait. <laughs> it, he's going to wait. Oh. <laughs> Why, hey, why are you crying? It's a free trip. Yeah, well, they, they'll probably have meals, Matt Frank. Well, yeah, but, but, uh, are there any layovers? Layovers? <laughs> it's, it's not yeah, even, cool. it's oh, not yeah. even yeah. first yeah. class. Yeah. It's yeah. one yeah. way to go. Oh, Matt Frank, yeah. 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 we were going to make the same. Yeah. I wish I could. Yeah. Get him, Torg. You can't come in here. No one's allowed. Where? Where did you come from? You're the biggest toy I've ever seen. <laughs> and very well made, too. By the great dog star, Santa's treating him like a toy. Get him, Tor, grab him. He's become a toy. Wigna, we'll have to get Santa ourselves. Come on, Volda. <laughs> What have we here? More toys? <laughs> Those are Martians. Santa Claus, you're coming with us. No, you can't take him now. It's too near Christmas. Quiet, you. But... Oh. 
We don't want to hurt you, Santa Claus, so come along quietly. Why? Why did you have to do that to my helper? It's harmless. It'll wear off in a short while. Oh. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Now, you come with us. We need you on Mars. Are you sure this is harmless? Oh, I never saw such lazy people standing around like statues. There's work to be done. Let's get to it. Oh, my, oh, me, oh, oh, Mrs. Claus is going to be very angry about this. Take him, Torg. Torg, take him. Obey my command. Forget it, Kima. Rigna was right. He's nothing but a toy now. Best to leave him here. Believe me, I had nothing whatsoever to do about this. You know, my dear, I can't recall a time when you were so silent for so long. Let's go, old man. And Mrs. Santa Claus has positively identified the kidnappers as Martians. Never in the history of mankind have the nations of the world reacted with such unanimity and cooperation. Tonight, the lights will burn until dawn in the United Nations building, as the leaders of the world map a course of action. And at Cape Kennedy, our correspondent interviewed Werner von Green, the man in charge of America's star shot program. Mr. von Green, what is the space agency doing about this? Well, we have mobilized all the men and equipment in our Starshot project. And we have rushed our astronauts into an intensive program for the final phase of their training. Now our Starshot ship is supposed to undergo six months of test flights. But we are going to forget about the testing and go after those Martian monkeys. Isn't that risky? Of course it is risky. But every one of our astronauts is begging for the chance to go after the Martians. Who wouldn't give everything to bring Santa back to our children? We interrupt this news bulletin to bring you this news bulletin. Martians have indeed landed. We are definitely being invaded by Martian spacecraft. We advise you to panic now using a form something like this. Help! Is he still here, Matt Frank? Yes, he is. Oh. I know how we can make him disappear. Uh, tell us, tell us, Matt. Let's cover our eyes. All right. Cover our eyes. So nope. He's still here. Oh, of shots. Still here. Well, I don't understand it. It always works at home. The little kids always go for it. Why doesn't it work here at the studio? And now back to our film in progress. <laughs> Earth hasn't reacted yet. No radar beams being bounced off our ship. Looks like we made a clean getaway. <laughs> How's our captain? He's having the time of his life. He's such a funny little man. Why, well, I've only been with him for five minutes and he has me laughing just like an earthling. <laughs> What's soft and round and, and you put it on a stick and, and you toast it in a fire and it's green. I don't know what. A Martian <laughs> That's what you're all becoming. Martian mellows. Soft. Weak. That old man is a menace. And it was a very foggy Christmas Eve. Well, I could barely make out this chimney in the fog. But I found it all right and I started to crawl in. Well, I tell you, it was the biggest chimney I'd ever been in. And then suddenly, suddenly I realized it wasn't a chimney at all. It was the smokestack of the Queen Elizabeth. Well, don't you think that was funny? Yes, Santa. Uh, well, why don't you laugh? 
Gee, Santa, it's all our fault. We told them where to find you. Oh, Boulder Dash in a fiddle dee dee, Billy boy. Everybody knows where Santa lives. Besides, I've always wanted to visit Mars. Mommy and Daddy are going to be angry. You think that's something? I can just see Mrs. Claus now. Christmas coming, and I'm not there. She'll have a fit. <laughs> oh, me, oh, my, oh, me. Come and get it. Dinner time. <laughs> Here's Droppo. If I can't cheer you up, Droppo can. He always makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, you'll have a wonderful dinner tonight. Oh, there's soup and beef stew and chocolate ice cream. No, thank you, Droppo. I'm not hungry. <gasps> Come on, Billy. Oh. Well, is it all right if I have your chocolate ice cream? Sure. Oh, I just love chocolate ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Mars must be a terrible place to live. Some chocolate ice cream. Pills for dinner. <laughs> I suppose if a Martian has a headache, he doesn't take pills. He takes chocolate ice cream. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Kimo, look at this. That small blip is not an asteroid, it's a spaceship, and it's on our tail. It's getting closer. Impossible, Rigna. They couldn't have spotted us. We have our radar shield on. I know that, sir, but they are gaming on us. Is it possible Earth has a secret device that can penetrate our radar shield? They have a secret device, and his name is Billy Foster. I warned you that these Earthlings are dangerous. They'll destroy us if we allow them. Well, I won't allow them. I think we underestimate the resourcefulness of these Earth people. Very clever of the boy. Make the repairs, Rigna. I'll take evasive action. Well, and how is Santa and the little Earthling? Why, it must be tiresome cooped up in this little room. Say, how would you like to see the rest of the ship? You're not fooling me. You don't like us. You're mean. Oh, come on now. That's not true. Why, Santa makes everyone feel good. Even me. I don't trust you. No, no, Billy boy. That's not the Christmas spirit. Why, of course, Boldar. We'd love to take the grand tour. All right, children. is called the... That's right. Sure. This is where you come when you're ready to go out in space. It's air time. You put on your space suit and go out through that door. When you come back, the door closes and they pump air back into the room through there. When it reaches the pressure of the rest of the ship, you can take your space suit off. Smart lad. Where's the control that opens the door, son? Not here. That's in the control deck. You see, once you pull that switch, the warning bell sounds, and in 60 seconds, that door opens. That's to give a spaceman a chance to make a final checkup on their equipment. There's no way out in space. If that door were open now, it will pull all the air out of this room and us with it. You certainly know a great deal about space travel, son. He's going to be a spaceman when he grows up. Maybe sooner than that. That must be the door timer. Santa, he locked us in. Oh, I don't think so. He probably just stepped out for a moment. It's locked. I don't trust Baldor. He's not like Kim or any others. I don't like him. I'm worried, Santa. No, no, children. Let's not get excited.
did you say this leads to, Billy? Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Who's in the airlock? No one. Now. What's going on, Voldar? Oh, Chief, Sal and the children are missing. Where are they? Drifting around in space. Along with the rest of the space jump. <laughs> You bulldog, you wish you were floating around out there in space. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Santa Claus, you're all right. I, I thought you would... You well, would... when Bulldog accidentally left us in the airlock and then came up here and accidentally threw the door switch, we knew we had to get out of there in a hurry or that would be the end of us. Uh, uh, accidentally, of course. <laughs> so he crawled out through the air duct. The air duct? But the air duct is just a little, and, and you're so big. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you're talking to Santa Claus, son. <laughs> but how? Well, well, now, you wouldn't want me to tell my secret, would you? <laughs> oh, oh, poor man. He's fainted just like someone who's seen a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Begin landing operation. Firing retro rockets. One and two. Five. Lower landing legs. Rigna. After we secured the ship and lowered the ladder, you and Hargo get Voldar out of the brig and take him to the council room. He'll stand trial immediately. All right, Chief. We've landed. Hatch open. Hatch open. Water down. Power off. Ship secure. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Uh, Merry Christmas, Baldor. All right, on your feet, come on. Uh, drop him! Oh, look, I was handing me food pills through the bars, and he grabbed my... Shut up, drop him. Kima, come in quickly. Kima. Yes, Regna. Baldor has escaped. What? He's gone. That can only mean trouble. Put a constant guard on Santa and the Earth children. Voldar will be back. Return to the range for Western Wednesdays on Moorhead Access. Classic Westerns featuring John Wayne, Roy Rogers, The Lone Ranger, Randolph Scott, and many more are featured on Western Wednesdays. Find the schedule at moreadaccess.org or check your local list. Watch Western Wednesdays on Moorhead Access. Rip Roaring Adventure, thrilling mysteries and action-packed classics. Tune in for Thrilling Thursdays on Access Channel 99. Classic films featuring Tarzan, Hercules, Sherlock Holmes, Dick Tracy, and many more on Thrilling Thursdays. Get some excitement back into the middle of the week with stars like John Wayne, Cary Grant, Danny Kay, and many more. Check the schedule at moreheadaxis.org and tune into Access Channel 99 on Moorhead Cable or on Digital Channel 68 in the entire metro on Cable 1. Thrilling Thursdays on Access Channel 99. Aliens, monsters, alien monsters, thrills and chills. Tune in for classics of sci-fi and horror on Theater of the Fantastic. Some of the best, and not so best, of classic sci-fi and horror right here on Moorhead Access. Featuring stars like Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff, Basil Rathbone, and many more. Get the schedule at moorheadaccess.org or check your local listings. 
Theater of the Fantastic on Moorhead Access. Wasn't that a wonderful fight scene between Boldar and Kima? At that pace, they should be able to keep it up all day without getting hurt. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Sound. Well, are, are you trying to warn someone? Well, that, that, that's my laugh. That's the Mad Frank laugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's it. It. No one laughs like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the moms and dads and the kids, they love it. Yeah. Yes, Can I hear it again? I see why the kids on Mars like you. That's right. And I can't leave because I need all my fans. Who would take care of my fans here on Earth? But. But my orders are to bring back Mad Frank. Well, uh, I... Uh... Or maybe somebody like Mad Frank. <laughs> maybe someone like you. <laughs> hey, I've got a great idea. What? Why don't you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm a biophysicist. Well, oh. I used to sell insurance. <laughs> <laughs> this could I'll be like a new it. lease on life for you. <laughs> and a new lease on life for us, too. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that laugh. Oh, good. Well, sit down here. You be yeah, Mad Frank. Yeah, yeah. Oh, give, okay. me, give, me, give me your green helmet. Yeah, and let me take this yeah, nasty yeah. little okay. guy. <laughs> and you, and you take my hat. <laughs> oh, just sit down there. I like oh, this. this is fun. Here. And here's, like here, this. here's the script. Here. All you right. do is just read right here. There's a script. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Put your glasses on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, right, Gordo Glick, Condor Mina, Miss Frizzy. <laughs> yes, I think we can give you a seat near the window. <laughs> and Glick made our heat open, George. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, George, I agree. No bones about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I might add, it's no skin off my back. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even in the script. He made it so oh, that's good. Yeah, 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 Matt Omar, if I, if you weren't sitting there, I'd think you were me. He's good. He's really yeah. good. Yes. I, I love your laugh. The laugh is good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which one is the real Mad Frank? Oh, oh, no. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't This is good. Oh, I like it. You are just okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. No, Bomar, I'll call you the moment he arrives. Is Dapo coming back too? Yes, Germa, now go back to your studies. Oh, Kimo. Are you alone? No. Earthlings, Billy and Betty. Welcome to our home. There's someone else, too. Come on, come on in. <laughs> Lady Beaumont, I'm not accustomed to entering people's homes through the door, but you have no chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Santa Claus. We hope you'll make the children on Mars very happy. I'll try, dear lady. I'll try. Where are they? Where are they? Well, we'll start with my youngsters. How are they, Momar? The same. Quiet, remote, and very unhappy. They're inside studying. Well, let old Santa say hello to them. And I'm sure these children would like to meet them. I'll tell them you're here. Why over 5 pi r squared to determine the correct orbit from Mars to Jupiter traveling along vector A through the 17th quadrant at a power of 12 megatrons? Father! Father, we missed you! <laughs> I missed you too. Children, I brought some visitors from Earth. Will you come in please, children? Billy and Betty, this is Bomar and Germa. Hi. 
There's nothing in it. What are you giving me? My hand to shake. How old are you? Ten. I'm ten too. And Grandma's eight. So is my sister. We have another Earth person that wants to see you. steps all by itself. I was tempted to steal one. I'd like to fool around with the thing. Toys! The decay is setting in. It's even affecting you. Soon all of Martians will be blithering idiots. Oh, we've no time to lose. We must go into action. Now, we cannot eliminate Santa Claus, but we can discredit him. Make him a laughingstock through our bars. Come on. Now, listen. Careful. The workshop closes at 10 o'clock. The guards will be in Kima's house. Guarding Santa Claus. Now this is what we'll do. See? You take the left throw. Hi, Billy. Everything okay? Gee, Doug, well, everything's great. Oh, Santa. Hundreds of thousands of letters from all over Mars. Well, yours. <laughs> Two dolls, yes, Patty. Three baseball bats. Three baseball bats. Look at me. Santa Claus, the great toy maker. Pressing buttons. As automation for you. Technology. <laughs> well, that's enough for today, folks. Let's close up shut. Hey, Santa. Well, we sure did a lot today. Boy, a lot of toys came out the last day, Santa. Pretty nice, eh? Lady Moma made it for me. Can I try it on Santa? <laughs> Don't be silly, Droppo. This would never fit you. Why, well, you have to fatten up first. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, there's another day gone, children. 
as they say on earth, another day, another dollar. Well, hello, Santa. How are you feeling today? Tired? No, no, I'm not tired. But my finger is, it's been pressing buttons all day long. <laughs> well, I think I'll go in and put my finger to bed. <laughs> Dear children, here's your milk. You can play for half an hour and then you'll have to go to bed. Daddy, may we watch the Earth program? Certainly, dear, but only for half an hour. Billy? Betty? Don't you want to watch the Earth program? Oh, no, sir. We're not interested in Earth programs. I'm going to sleep. Good night. Me, too. Just a moment. Good night, Mr. Kimar. Good night, Lady Momar. Just a moment, children. Are you feeling well? Oh, we feel fine, sir. Good night. Good night. Has someone been mistreating you? Oh, no, sir. You and Lady and Mama have just been swelled to us. Good night. What could it be, Mama? They're behaving the way our children used to behave. Can't you tell, Kima? They're homesick. They miss their parents, their friends. Kima, you've got to send those children back. Impossible. Santa says I gotta fatten up. Hmm. Walton milk. Chocolate cake. Hmm. Banana split. Hmm. With whipped cream. Mm. That takes too long. I'm tired. I think I'll go down to the workshop and make some more toys. Ho, ho, ho! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, ho, 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 ho,
Sagebrush Cinema. Hello, I'm Tony Tilton. I'm General Manager of MCAM, Moorhead Community Access Media. MCAM is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we bring you the Moorhead Access channels throughout the city of Moorhead and in the whole metro on Cable One. MCAM is in major need of replacing some aging gear, so we're asking for your help. MCAM does what it can with a small budget, but now we need some help, and so we're having a capital campaign. MCAM is hoping to raise around $10,000 for equipment needed and several thousand more for streaming and for programming purchases. We appreciate your help, so please go to our website, moreheadaccess.org, and click on the donate button to directly donate via PayPal. MCAM looks forward to providing you with local and regional coverage of what you enjoy. Thank you for your donation to Moorhead Community Access Media. Well, the Three Stooges seem to think that Droppo is Santa Claus. Can you imagine anyone being stupid enough to make a mistake like that? Mad Frank, <laughs> Mad Frank, have you been watching? Mad Frank, you're looking a little green around the gills. Have you been feeling well? Uh, have you been eating all right? Uh, have you had your flu shot yet? Ah, uh, well, Mad Programmer, perhaps you don't realize who I am. Hey, Mad Frank, I've been looking at this ray gun. I can't figure out how to operate it. Can you believe yeah, this? this? They look still think this. I'm the real look Mad this. Frank. I still don't know how it works. I think I know. Let me have it. You know, <laughs> Mad Frank, Mad Frank, what, what's going on here? Well, no, Chopper, uh, what are you doing here? Don't, don't, don't fool with that. Give me that gun. What are you doing? Be careful, I Oh, my God. Wow, Matt Frank, I didn't know the gun was loaded. Isn't anybody paying attention to my audience? What's going on here? Well, what Billy happened Jabber? to Billy Jabber? And, and what happened Give to me him? that thing no, no, before you get in trouble. Mars what's going on around here? What? Gunfight at the K.O. Corral. Uh, excuse me, that was uh, gunfight at the O.K. Corral. It was K.O. Corral. I know my films. I'm in the film business. It was gunfight at the K.O. It, it, was, the, it was the gun... Like I said, reminds me of a movie I saw on Mars once. Gunfight at the K.O. Corral. <laughs> now stay put, my fat little friend. Hey, Sid, how do you like this toy? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. My friend asked you a question. Answer him. Oh, oh, oh. Now, it's quiet, Sid. Put on a nuclear curtain. Tomorrow marks the end of Operation Santa Claus. <laughs> and Mars returns to normal. <laughs> Droppo? Droppo, you rascal, where are you? Droppo! Oh. Children, breakfast is ready. Good morning, dear. Kima, I can't find Droppo. His bed hasn't been slept in. What's he up to now? Good morning. Good morning, Lady Moma. Oh, oh, my extra suit. The one you made for me is missing. I'm sure I brought it home from the toy shop last night. And that's two things that are missing. Your suit and dropper. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> that explains it. When you find my missing suit, You'll find Droppo inside it. He's out someplace playing Santa Claus. <laughs> Take care of him. Oh, no, no, no. Now let him have his fun. He's probably at the toy shop making toys. He loves it. <laughs> Children, will you please hurry? Breakfast is ready. Yes, yes. If you don't hurry, your breakfast will get cold. <laughs> Rappo, we're here. He's hiding, Santa. <laughs> oh, playing hide and seek, eh? All right, Rappo. Here we are.
we come, ready or not. <laughs> yeah. He's not here, Santa. That's funny. Oh, well, he'll turn up. Let's get started. <laughs> hey, boy. Ready? Okay. Let's go. One teddy bear and one dog. One teddy bear and one dog. Santa, stop the machine. Look. The dog has a teddy bear pet and the teddy bear has a dog pet. I can't understand it. Well, let's try it again. What's next, Betty? One baseball bat. A baseball tennis. Uh, why, uh, this will never do. The machine isn't working right. Oh, dear. What else, Betty? A toy train. A toy train. Well, all right. Yeah. Why, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, this never happened when we made toys by hand. Something very strange is happening here. Puma, I think you'd better call your father. Father? Father, this is Boma. Yes, Boma. Father, we're in the toy shop. Joppo isn't here, and there's something wrong with the toy machine, too. I'll be right over. It's time to go. Sim, wake up. I still think you're making a mistake. It's too dangerous walking right into the enemy camp. Team Aurora's men wouldn't dare lay a finger on us. Not while we're keeping Santa Claus a hostage. Now, if we're not back in three hours, you know what to do. All right, Sim. Open the nuclear curtain. Just a word of warning. If you got any big ideas, forget them. If you walk through that nuclear curtain, you'll be disintegrated like that. Sabotage. Somebody switched all the wiring. Droppo's gone, your suit is missing, and now this machine's been sabotaged. Put them all together, it spells Voldar. He was here, and he thought Droppo was me. He's got Droppo, and I'm going to find him. Poor Droppo. Surprised to see us? You're under arrest, Voldar. <laughs> Stop playing with toys. Put it away, Kima. We have a weapon that's much more potent than that. As you may know, we are holding Santa Claus a hostage. One false move, and your little ho, ho, ho man will be destroyed. <laughs> All right, what do you want, Voldar? These are our terms. First, destroy the toy machine. Second, we will release Santa Claus if you promise to send him and the Earthlings back to their planet. Third, no more joy through toys nonsense on Mars. Well? Well. You win. Are you sure you have Santa Claus? You know we have him. You mean you had him? How did he get out of the cave? Sim, that idiot! <laughs> and how did he get here so, so, so fast? Uh, Santa Claus has powers that you don't know about. All right, arms up. Rigna, Hargo, Lomas, report. This is Rigna, Kima. Argo and Lomas are with me. Good. I've got Voldar and Stobo. I'll keep them here in the storeroom of the toy shop. Rigna, you come here and take them off my hands. I want Hargo and Lomas to look for a man named Shim. Tell them to search the caves along the transverse canal. Right, Kima. All right, you two. In there. All right, you might as well relax. 
You're going to be here for a while. Sit down. of leaving Santa, let me remind you, once you hit that nuclear curtain, there won't even be a whisker left. Ho, ho, ho! Hey, Santa, be careful! What are you going to do with us? You're going to stand trial before the council. I don't think you'll be causing any more trouble. I think that should do it, Billy boy. Close the door, son. Now, I think we need a little red paint, and you'll find it in the storeroom. Sure, Santa. Yeah, that's a good boy. This time I'll take care of Santa Claus for good and smash that machine. Santa! Santa! Volga and another man are in the storeroom, and they're coming to get you. Oh, they are, are they? Yeah. Well, maybe they'd like to have some fun with our toys, and we'll see that they do. Won't we, kids? <laughs> oh, -ho, we meet again, eh? I don't know how you escape Shim. But you won't escape me. You're through. Goldar, why don't you uh, relax? You're going to relax permanently. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he 
you don't need me here, Kima. You've got a wonderful Santa Claus of your own. Yeah. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Rip Roaring Adventure, thrilling mysteries and action packed classics. Tune in for Thrilling Thursdays on Access Channel 99. Classic films featuring Tarzan, Hercules, Sherlock Holmes, Dick Tracy, and many more on Thrilling Thursdays. Get some excitement back into the middle of the week with stars like John Wayne, Cary Grant, Danny Kaye, and many more. Check the schedule at moreheadaccess.org and tune into Access Channel 99 on Moorhead Cable or on Digital Channel 68 in the entire Metro on Cable 1. Thrilling Thursdays on Access Channel 99. Aliens, monsters, alien monsters, thrills and chills. Tune in for classics of sci-fi and horror on Theater of the Fantastic. Some of the best and not so best of classic sci-fi and horror right here on Moorhead Access. Featuring stars like Bella Lugosi, Boris Karloff, Basil Rathbone, and many more. Get the schedule at moorheadaccess.org or check your local listings. Theater of the Fantastic on Moorhead Access. Return to the range for Western Wednesdays on Moorhead Access. Classic Westerns featuring John Wayne, Roy Rogers, The Lone Ranger, Randolph Scott, and many more are featured on Western Wednesdays. Find the schedule at moorheadaccess.org or check your local list. Watch Western Wednesdays on Moorhead Access. So, they're going to use Droppo as Santa Claus. <laughs> Finally, a job you can handle. <laughs> oh, and don't worry about your friends. The effect wears off shortly. As a matter of fact, in three, two, one. Oh, wow, what seems wrong? Well, what's going on here, fellas? I don't understand. We, uh, we, uh, did you, we, we, well, Miss Frizzy, what do you think? Well, you zapped me. What do you think about that, George? You zapped us. You're going to get zapped. No, that's he that. was the one that zapped me, and no. then you zapped me. No, no, I zapped you. You zapped me. Zapped. You zapped me. Zapped. But somebody zapped me. Well, zapped. I think I'm all zapped out. Yeah, that's oh. what I want to talk to you about. Your time is up. What does that mean? It means in Martian, the sclerb is on the other flarb. What does that mean, Matt Frank? Yeah. That means the shoe is on the other foot. Oh, I hope his feet are both the same size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this planet isn't big enough for the two of us, Pilgrim. Yeah, Matt Frank, let's send him back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. no, you can't send me back. I have failed my mission to bring back Mad Frank. The council will permanently zap me. Wow, how, how long is that, yeah. Mad Frank? Well, I think it's forever, Billy Jabber. Oh. Well, we can't do that to Mad Omar, no matter what he's no. done. No, we no. can't. Let's send him back as you. Now oh, there's, there's an, an idea. idea. Yeah. Yes. Well, Dropo became Santa Claus. Why couldn't Omar become Mad Omar? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Good idea. Uh, okay. Mad Programmer, you go find some old Mad Frank films for Mad Omar. No sooner spoken than said, Mad Frank. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> Billy Jabber, yeah. Yeah. You, you get him a sponsor. All right, I'll get him a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good idea. Well, well, what's a sponsor? Oh, you know, like Mars Candy Bar and Canal number five? <laughs> <laughs> I'll find something really out of this world. <laughs> uh, Icky Bod, you go dig him up a cape and hat, okay? Oh, I'll get a cape and hat right yeah, back. Yeah. Mad <laughs> Frank, you people are so good to me. Well, Films. Yes. Uh, Sponsor and a, a, a hat and cape. Yes, yes. About the only thing left, I guess, is a uh, contract. Oh. <laughs> Here, sign on the dotted line. Oh, that's simple. <laughs> uh, what does the fine print say? Oh, that's just the normal contract jargon. You know, this belongs to Mad Frank Enterprises. The normal 60-40 split. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, um, uh, what about interplanetary distribution? Ooh, it's... Uh, all in there. <laughs> this is a sign. <laughs> Goodbye, Billy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Betty dear. You take care of yourself. Bye. I've got something for you, Billy. Gee, thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Gee, we had fun. We're going to miss you. Do you think we'll ever meet again? I'm sure you will, children. Thank you, Santa, for bringing happiness to the children of Mars. And the Christmas spirit to all of us. Son, from the bottom of my heart, I wish you and yours 
the very best of everything. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Oh, you forgot, wait. <laughs> oh, yes, no pills, look, look, kids, no pills! <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Now, if we hurry, we can get back in time for Christmas Eve. Yay! Shall we get going? Yay! Goodbye, dear friends. Away! I'm general manager of MCAM, Moorhead Community Access Media. MCAM is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we bring you the Moorhead Access channels throughout the city of Moorhead and in the whole metro on Cable One. MCAM is in major need of replacing some aging gear, so we're asking for your help. MCAM does what it can with a small budget, but now we need some help, and so we're having a capital campaign. MCAM is hoping to raise around $10,000 for equipment needed and several thousand more for streaming and for programming purchases. We appreciate your help, so please go to our website, moreheadaccess.org, and click on the Donate button to directly donate via PayPal. MCAM looks forward to providing you with local and regional coverage of what you enjoy. Thank you for your donation to Moorhead Community Access Media. The Moorhead Access Channel can be seen 24-7 all over the world. Moorhead Access is live streaming everywhere so you can see us on anything with web access. Use your phone, tablet, computer, smart TV, or web accessible DVD player to see us on whatever size screen you want. Just go to moreheadaccess.org and click on the big live stream button. Then click on the viewer, that's it. Go to moreheadaccess.org and click to live stream the Moorhead Access channel. Isn't that nice? Santa and the kids are going back to where they belong. I would have never guessed the film would end this way. <laughs> Matt Frank! Matt oh, Frank! What is it? I've what got is? Matt Omar ready to go. Oh, well, can we see him? Yeah, bring him in, boys. All right. <laughs> well, look at this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Matt Omar. Welcome to Matt Omar Presents. Oh, 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 that is good. Beautiful. Oh, Matt Omar, on Mars, you're going to be the Ferg's Fleam. 
What does that mean, Matt Frank? It means he's going to be the cat's meow. Oh. <laughs> and I found a sponsor. Who is it? Battlestar Galaxative. <laughs> and I found a whole lot of old Mad Frank films for Matt Omar. I'm going to put them in metal containers so when you fly through the radiation belt, they won't be contaminated. Oh, that's oh, nice. That's yeah. nice. Well, it looks like it's departure time. <clears throat> well, we're going to take him on his way. Uh, just a minute. Fido. Foo. Glip. What does that mean, Matt Frank? May the Zeltoids cross your Zicarus. <laughs> That's nice. All right. Well, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> see you later, Matt Frank. Oh, nice to see you. <laughs> well, Harvey, what'd you think of Matt Omar? He'll never hold a candle to you, Matt Frank. As long as you have the contract. As long as I have the contract. <laughs> well, speaking of candles, <laughs> George, did uh, did the night zip by fast enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And Miss Frizzy, Miss Frizzy, well, well. Would you ever like to fly to Mars? <laughs> oh, I forgot. Yes, you're very prone to air sickness. <laughs> It looks like Matt Omar is off, and uh, so am I. <laughs> if you're driving home tonight and should see a UFO, don't panic. It's probably just an ultra film overload. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Back up the staircase, Miss Frizzy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Have you ever counted these numbers of stairs? Uh -huh. I think there's 131. Ooh. Why do you suppose they have our studio down in the basement? Uh, no, I don't think it's a bomb shelter. Uh, no, I don't think the Russians are a threat anymore. That mad Omar. I think he's gonna do well on Mars. And you know why? <laughs> uh, it's because he's following the mad Frank form. Oh. Did you hear that? <laughs> you gotta be deaf. Well, like I was saying, it's because he's following the mad Frank format. You see, there's a little class about. Uh, 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 uh.